building, the firehouse where we broadcast Democracy Now! every day. Well, Election Day is one day away. Tomorrow, tens of millions of Americans will head to the polls. Is the nation's voting system ready for the unprecedented turnout? Already more votes have been cast before Election Day than ever before. As of Saturday night, there were some 27 million absentee and early votes in 30 states, according to the Associated Press. But already, reports of voting irregularities, long lines, malfunctioning machines and badly managed polling stations are pouring in from across the country. Despite documented irregularities, about a quarter of all voters will use electronic machines that offer no paper record to verify their choice was accurately recorded. Voting rights groups have filed lawsuits against election officials in Pennsylvania and Virginia, saying they've not stocked enough paper ballots to prepare for the expected turnout. In Colorado, Tennessee, Texas and West Virginia, voters have reported using touchscreen machines that have flipped their votes to the wrong candidate or party. Meanwhile, Florida has switched to its third ballot system in the past three election cycles, and glitches associated with the transition have caused confusion at early voting sites. This all comes in the wake of voter suppression tactics that have seen tens of thousands of voters potentially lose their right to vote. In the battleground state of Colorado, voter rights activists recently won a major victory after state officials agreed to reinstate tens of thousands of people whose names had been removed from the polls. Uh, from the voter rolls. Mark Crispin Miller is a professor of media culture and communication at New York University. He's the author of several books, most recently Loser Take All, Election Fraud and the Subversion of Democracy, 2000-2008. His previous book, Fooled Again, How the Right Stole the 2004 Election and While They'll Steal the Next One Too. Welcome to Democracy Now! Thanks for having me back, Amy. Well, let's start um, where I haven't seen much mention, and that is this man, Mike Connell, in Ohio, testifying. Who is he? What is his relevance to the big day, to Election Day tomorrow? Yeah, this, this uh, event in a courtroom in Columbus may be one of the most important things to happen in this whole election, and maybe one of the most important things to happen in American history. I mean, this sounds hyperbolic, I know, but it is true. Mike Connell is, uh, has been named as uh, Karl Rove's computer guru since 2000. Uh, the lawyers in the case refer to Connell as a high IQ Forrest Gump because he's been on the scene of every dubious election we've had uh, over the last eight years, starting with Florida 2000. Now, he has been named by a man named Stephen Spoonamore, S-P-O-O-N-A-M-O-R-E, who's a very unusual uh, and particularly unimpeachable kind of whistleblower. He's a conservative Republican. He's a former McCain supporter. But above all, he is a renowned and highly successful expert at the detection of computer fraud. He works for big banks. He works for foreign governments, the Secret Service. His job is to figure out how computers are used to steal money or information or votes. Well, he's named a lot of people in the Bush-Cheney uh, election subversion conspiracy. He's worked with them. He knows them personally. And months ago, he named uh, Mike Connell uh, and his company GovTech Solutions as having played a crucial role in the, uh, the, basically, the electronic subversion of the vote in Ohio in 2004, and Spoonamore has actually described the computer architecture that was used to do this. Now, on the strength of this uh, testimony, the lawyers in the case had the judge issue a subpoena to Mike Connell uh, last week. Connell defied the subpoena. He was in contempt. Late last week, the, the lawyers filed a motion to compel compliance, and to everyone's surprise and, and delight, the judge ordered Connell to appear today and to be deposed for two hours uh, about his role in, in this longstanding electronic plot, basically, to flip votes uh, towards the Republicans. Some of this uh, deposition will be sealed, and I have to tell you the part that will be sealed. Apparently, Rove has threatened Connell. Uh, he told him that if Connell did not take the fall for this whole thing, uh, the Department of Justice would start investigating Connell's wife, Heather, for improper lobbying practices. Now, that part of the deposition we're not going to know the answers to. But what's astonishing to me... Who does she lobby for? Uh, various politicians and so on. Whether she's guilty or innocent is beside the point, because, as we know, the Department of Justice is a cudgel 
in the collective hands of the Bush administration. This would be more selective prosecution. But what's really astonishing here is that Karl Rove could make that threat with such impunity. This shut Connell up. And he was, you know, earlier inclined to talk about what was going on. Then he got himself three very expensive Republican attorneys who promised that they would make sure he could not be deposed before Election Day. Well, hallelujah, he's being deposed before Election Day. And the reason why— Today. Today. The reason why this is so important, and the strategy behind the early part of this case all along has been that if we can shine a spotlight on the perpetrators of this kind of fraud before Election Day, make them nervous, make them pull in their ha uh, horns, distract them, is a good chance that they might not try to do what they're clearly ready to do. Because let me just add, Connell is on the McCain payroll. He's working for McCain right now, and he specializes in a particular kind of computer architecture whose only purpose, Buna Moore says, is to steal votes. I want to go back to two issues. One, how do you know Karl Rove made these threats? That's a very strong allegation. Well, it is a very strong allegation that comes from the lawyers. Uh, that the lawyers were evidently told by Connell or someone close to him. Uh, but this stuff has been on the website of uh, Velvet Revolution. Ross Story has reported it. The media, however, has remained overfocused, of course, on Acorn, <laughs> which uh, is a, a, a nothing story. But let me make clear that the brouhaha over Acorn, right, this orchestrated propaganda drive about Acorn, has many distracting purposes, and one of them, I promise you, is to distract us from this case. This case is an Ohio RICO case. Well, lately, the Republicans filed an Ohio RICO case against ACORN, and I think the RICO purpose— RICO meaning the, racketeering. It's a racketeering case. It's, uh, Ohio has the strongest racketeering statute in the country. This is one of the reasons why the lawyers decided to go there and do this. What do you mean he specializes in the computer architecture, the Internet architecture that can steal elections? Well, it's a system. Uh, it, if people go to the website for Velvet Revolution, particularly uh, www.rovecybergate.com, they'll, they'll find the documents that Spoonamore has filed describing the setup that's known as Man in the Middle. This happened in Ohio in 2004. It involves shunting the data that comes from the a website for the Secretary of State, I mean the election returns, taking those election returns as they come to the website in real time and shunting them to a computer somewhere else. What happened in 2004 was the election returns from uh, Ken Blackwell's website were shunted to a computer in a basement in Chattanooga, Tennessee, under the control of a, of a very partisan private company to which Connell was connected. The data was shunted to this strange computer in, in, in Chatt Chattanooga and then directed back to the Secretary of State's website. As Connell, uh, I'm sorry, as Spoonamore has said, the only purpose of doing this man in the middle thing is to commit crime. Uh, Bev Harris of Black Box Voting has lately reported that there are similar men in the meta, uh, middle setups in, in uh, uh, Colorado, Illinois, and Kentucky. So it's very important that, that tomorrow, when we're out there engaging in election protection and working to make the turnout as large as it possibly can be, because the larger the turnout, the harder the theft, people have to be paying very close attention to the numbers. They have to be watching the traffic at different precincts and so on. I want to go to the issue of voting all over the country. What have you're following it very closely? You're going to be with us Tuesday night for a five hour broadcast um, to be monitoring what's happening in all the states, especially the key swing battleground states. What have you learned? It's estimated about a quarter of people have already voted. Yes, an astonishing number of people have voted, and I take that as very good news, not because that necessarily ensures their votes will be safe. I take it as good news because it indicates to me that an awful lot of Americans understand that the voting apparatus that we have out there is untrustworthy and they're taking, uh, you know, special steps to see to it that their votes count. But what we've seen over the last couple of weeks is basically a, a, a replay on steroids, if you will, of what we saw in 2004, vote flipping by machines in West Virginia, Texas, Tennessee, and Missouri that we know of. And let me make something clear, Amy. Uh, the, it, all the flips go in one direction. It's all from Obama, either to McCain or to Cynthia McKinney, as it happens. We did hear of three people 
who claimed that their votes were flipped uh, from McCain to Obama in Tennessee, but they're all related to a Republican official. Their numbers are unlisted, and they told the local newspaper and not the election commission. So I'm, I have my doubts about those three cases. But there have also been, uh, uh, as usual, very long lines in Democratic precincts only. We're talking about a calculated kind of shortage that magically does not afflict Republican precincts, only Democratic Well, now, ones. in these pre-voting, in these long, early lines, well, not all precincts are open, right? Right. Not all, not all precincts. This is something that's happening in some parts of the country. Uh, and, and I want to make something clear here. Turnout on Election Day, massive turnout, unprecedented turnout is all important. Because, again, the larger the turnout, the harder the theft. 